In this video, I'll show you how I converted my Hadley telescope into a full go-to imaging Newtonian. All right, let's take a look at what I've done here. So I've got this on my go-to mount, and I'm using the uh, Skywatcher EQM35 Pro. I'll put a product link down below. And what I've done is I have printed out a second ring, all right? And then I created two dovetail mounts uh, on, I designed them in FreeCAD and then printed them out. And I don't have a download link now, but uh, I will probably put one where you can go get it. And then on one of those, I have the guide scope and the, I drill, I have put a hole in here so I could just use the quarter 20 screw. And I have reviewed this guide scope in a previous video. And so I also have links for that. And I'm using the, I believe it's the 120 mm guide camera. Now, so that, allows you to have a, a place to put this guide scope on one hand and then the mount on the other. And then um, what I did here to, to fix the focusing issue, let me swing this around and then I'll put the camera a little closer. Now on the original Hadley, we have a rotating focuser. Let me go get that. Oh, so here's the uh, original focuser uh, so there's a lot of slop, so I put um, some tape in there trying to get this tighter. And also, um, this, you see, this may not seem like much, but at 900 millimeter focal length, this little bit of slack here causes a huge problem when you're trying to image, because when you have a camera on it or a filter wheel or anything you're trying to do, it's just too much, and then the fact that it rotates, that's a huge problem. So what I did was this. I removed it, and I bought this aftermarket uh, non-rotating uh, Crayford-type focuser. It's a single speed. We've got a focus lock and a one and a quarter inch eyepiece adapter. And then I just removed it, and then I match drilled and I just bolted it right to that flat spot. Now I'll take the camera off so you can see this. All right, now here's how to mount this uh, focuser to this original assembly up here. Remove the helical focuser like I just showed you. And then they have four holes, they're evenly spaced. And all you need to do is rest the focuser on this bottom thing. Right here, there's a little lip and then drill these two holes, all right? Then flip it around, put two bolts in, and drill the other ones. And the reason you need to flip it around is because you can't match drill with this focuser because it's in the way. Now there's enough room that you can slip the bolts in, but there isn't enough room for you to drill. And that way you can get it exactly matched up and the focuser actually fits inside the existing hole just fine. And then just get four bolts and then just attach them on there. I use number eight and I have a variety pack. And so you just get the ones that fit. Really, really simple. And it works very well. And now the next thing you need to do is before you put in any imaging thing, get the laser collimator out. I, the one I use, I, I'll put a link below. And then you need to collimate this again with this new setup. And that's really quick. And you'll, before you do that, you're going to have to lower the secondary mirror, uh, or I'm oh, sorry, it was raise it, I believe it was, because it's not gonna be the same way. So you know, do this first and then get your laser collimator and get everything lined up. And then the last thing you need to do is you need to find this new focus link. And so uh, you can do, the best thing to do that is outside. And I had to lower mine down about, I don't know, probably about that much, something like that. And then just point it at some far away object, a half mile away or whatever, and then with the imaging camera in there, and then just get it uh, right where it needs to go right in the daytime, because that is our major pain to do at night. So don't, don't do it then. Now I'm outside, and this is the first test, and I'm going to shoot Orion tonight and see how it goes. So let's take a look at the results. 
Let's take a look at some of the raw data first. This is a hydrogen alpha image, and it's just a basic stretch. I just used the auto stretch function, didn't play around with it too much. And you can see that we have a lot of really good detail in the hydrogen channel. The stars are nice and round. Let's zoom in a little bit. Even zoomed in, they're pretty round from edge to edge, really. And it's a good, strong signal. So I was really happy with the hydrogen alpha. Now I take a look at the sulfur. Here's the original stretch. Normally sulfur is a weak image, but I was really impressed with how much detail I could get out of this. And keep in mind that this is only about 20 minutes of integration because it was just a test. And if we zoom in, we've, even if we zoom in a long way, the stars are pretty round. And I just love the detail that I was able to get out of this. So uh, that was impressive to me anyway. Now let's take a look at the oxygen. Here's the original stretch. And again, pretty good detail. And also, I took this in the Bortle 8 to 9 skies, so it's pretty bright out here. I have a lot of light pollution, and the, o the oxygen channel is hard to get in the city, at least for me. Now, when we combine them, we've got a couple of different ways we can combine them, and then I'll show you that next. Now, here's the combined uh, RGB color image. And this was based on a formula with pixel math. And so I had to play around with this quite a bit to get this t uh, to have a, the pleasing colors that I want because I don't really like the uh, typical SHO. It always comes out green. It's a real problem. And so this one is a, a combination. And we can look at that math. We go into the pixel math. You can see that it, I used... Um, for the red channel, a combination of all three, and green and blue. And these formulas, I got these from a website, and I can put a link below and you can see where I got them. I didn't create these. I used somebody else's and just, I, I like the preliminary results, and so you can try that. Now this is an HOO composition. So basically we have hydrogen alpha for the red, and for the green and blue oxygen. And for me, this is the easiest thing to do because it's the most natural and it doesn't take a lot of playing around to get it to work. And so it only uses two of the narrow bands, but I am pretty pleased with this result. So if we zoom in a little bit here, you can see we got nice round stars, even with multiple bands. And I think the diffraction spikes are pleasing, and a lot of people don't like them. But this, again, this is a reflector, so we're going to have diffraction spikes. So thanks for watching, and I hope you found that helpful. And if you want to see how I built the original telescope, there are links below. And so I hope you enjoyed that. Have a good day.